Hi, it's Jeff again, and I want to show you how to get the most out of the Source Monitor. Probably you've been editing already, you, you know some basics of editing, and you know that double-clicking or dragging a clip loads it up into your Source Monitor. A couple neat things. One is, is I can grab a bunch of clips and drag them all up to the Source Monitor at once. Let's go ahead and do this. It loads each clip sequentially, and you'll notice that there's a drop-down here where you can sit back and see the shots you loaded in their order. The beautiful part about this is that you can switch between a shot, reverse shot, or if you've got a lot of sound bites that you were about to edit to put together or string out an interview, you could load them all up in here regardless of what bin they came from and makes it easy to switch between them. Another thing that's really hot in this monitor is the time the, the the idea of the playhead indicator, your time code, where you can double click and you can type in a specific time code. Maybe I'll put in like 36 here and it'll jump right to that spot. If you're working from a time coded transcript or you're working with a producer who's really precise, this is a really valuable uh, it's very valuable for you to be able to navigate right to a specific spot. And you know, I don't think anybody on the planet uses the in point and the out point buttons here, but they're I and O. It's Shift I and Shift O to go to the in and out points, and it's Option I on the Mac or Op or Alt I on a PC to clear your in points. So you can do that either here with the button Alt I, Option I, or you can do it from the keyboard where I'm going to do it now, Option O. When you do have an in and out you have the choice to do a command K or a control K play between the in and out and I'm going to show you how to get to that a little bit more dynamically after I just point out here that this is your in and out duration that you have. Let's get that button for doing an in and out play from in and out on the key on the button bar here. There's a little plus and there's this button editor where you can add other items like play around. In fact play around is shift K Play in to out is right above it is Option K or Alt K on a PC, and you can just drag these in as you feel that they're valuable. You also have the ability to bring in a spacer to even these out to make them make more sense to you. It's just as easy, you can remove them. For example, I'm never going to use the play button on screen, and I think it's a mistake for it to be there at all. Same thing with frame right and frame left. They're just a waste of space. If you want to be really aggressive with that, there's even the ability up here under the panel menu to say, show transport controls and uncheck it entirely. Now you have no buttons there at all. This for me is the way I like to edit because this gives me the biggest picture and the most flexibility. It forces me to be keyboard driven and pretty much I think we can all agree that the more keyboard driven you are as an editor, the probably the faster you're gonna work. I'm going to bring this back to transport controls because I want to point out a couple other neat features. One is the one here that's called export frame. Anytime that you park on a frame, you can choose to make that frame the one you would export. Let's just take this right here because maybe you want to make put this on a DVD box. Maybe you need to put something like this on the web. I'm going to go ahead and press this button here for export frame and you can pick from a variety of formats as well as where you'd like to put that still. The last thing I want to show you has to do with the way I personally edit. While there are a lot of tabs across the top here for effects and audio mixer, there's no tab for the audio. Underneath the settings, the wrench, you have the ability to add things to switch this over to say for a waveform or to a vector scope. But what I find probably the most valuable of all of this is being able to switch this over to the audio waveform. I can now cut stuff based on audio the same way you would cut anything else. Let me load a different clip and switch over to its audio. Let's hear, hit a play here. Spread plugs and power wash. I just wanted to hear somebody speak. I'm going to go ahead and look at the audio waveform and we can actually see what their speech is. But we can't see the picture. We have to go and switch back and that's where I want to do something that's pretty cool. I'm going to go to our preferences here, our keyboard shortcuts. On the PC this will be under the edit menu and this is going to be called the waveform for the source monitor. This is the audio waveform and I like to put this under shift W and I like it shift W because I'm shifting to the waveform. I want to come back to the composite of the source monitor as well. And I'm going to type in the word composite. I'm going to double click here for a shortcut and make it shift Q because that's the key next to W. And now I can mark an in and out point, say 
right here at the beginning of whatever this person says, I for in, over here, O for out, and then I can say Shift Q to switch back to their picture. Shift W, Shift Q. So these are a couple tips to get the most out of the source monitor.